Okay, hello everyone. Thank you for joining this week's Tips and Tricks webinar. This is our continuing series on how to run your checkpoint environment more efficiently. Uh, today's topic is on HTTPS inspection configuration. Please use the Q&A chat in the Zoom session. If you have any questions, we'll make sure we answer those at the end of the webinar. Um, with that, we'll get started here. Our presenter today is a regional architect from Texas, Mickey Boland. Mickey, please show us what you got. All righty. Hello, everyone out there in TV land. I hope you're having a wonderful day and even better week and looking for uh, Friday. So today we'll talk about HTTPS inspection, a little bit of tips and tricks. But before we do that, I will start uh, with a, just kind of a reminder for 411 or 101 if you want HTTPS inspection, uh, the 411. So we'll talk a little bit about what is it. <laughs> oh, we have TLS, TLS. Uh, I did a replace on all SSL stuff because it's really TLS. Uh, Mickey, now. Mickey, I'm sorry. Can I pause a second? I got yes. somebody who says they can't hear. Can oh. anybody else? Is that just the one person? Somebody give me a thumbs up or throw it in the Q&A. Can you hear us okay? Okay, I've got to hear. Yep, we can hear. Okay, thank all you, right, everybody. Cool. Sorry, Mickey, go ahead. No worries. So we'll just go a little bit over kind of just review and then uh, we'll talk about the use cases. So specifically, we should address that we have a couple of use cases, one specifically for outbound and one for inbound, and then some advice in terms of starting with a small scope and then some considerations and best practices. All right. I don't think I have to convince you guys this is a little bit old data, but uh, encrypted web in numbers, it's over 90% of all internet traffic is HTTPS, it's all encrypted. Uh, we know that's constantly growing, pretty soon it'll be 100%. And I think all the Google is almost 100% because of um, because people are using Chrome. Uh, so anyway, you know that this is happening already and this is why we, we are, have, a, as a cybersecurity warriors, we have concerns like what's going on, what's in, in, in the HTTPS. Um, traffic. What are we actually, what is actually there? Are there threats? And we know there are. So um, really quick, by enabling it, you will uh, you actually turn on uh, HTTPS inspection. You have some configurations to do, and uh, you can use HTTPS inspection along with all the other blades. So if you are just doing inspect only, I mean, it comes with our software, so you can do it. Uh, but these other blades also uh, are super relevant for inspecting traffic for threats once you uh, actually do your decryption. So we'll talk about that. All right, before we get started, though, super important, what you need to keep in mind is there is a there's a risk reward and trade off in everything and everything that we do from a technology perspective, actually human too. Uh, so there is a performance consideration to uh, consider. Uh, you, there's ways that we can go out there and, and look at our sizing to see what the impact would be on our gateways. Um, so there's a little bit of administrative, over, administrative overhead. Uh, you have also potentially like you could actually drop stuff, especially like certain things that use certificate pinning. Um, you need to know your regulatory and legal statutes for your geo. And also your company's uh, uh, governance, risk, and compliance requirements. I definitely talk to your legal counsel. And then be sure that you understand there's always a human layer. Uh, we have uh, administrators still have, uh, it, uh, despite AI, we still have human administrators. And also we have to understand that we uh, where we may be getting, um, where we may be uh, looking at unencrypted logging you want to ensure that you have good separation of duties and know what know what you're going to inspect, right? So this is a very very specific carving out what you will actually ins inspect. All right, some alternatives. Well, if we don't do HTTP uh, HTTPS inspection, what can we do? So we can work with um, you. You don't have to do it. Um, you don't even have to use HTTP. Um, as inspection, but you can actually use categorization of websites um, with certificate checking. So this is uh, this is good because uh, even though that the um, information is encrypted, we can actually see that the common name of the certificate is listed. So we can identify based on those potentially based on those um, 
those URLs in the certificate, what is actually, uh, what's actually a friendly uh, uh, website. The other thing we can do is we can categorize with SNI. So even though everything's uh, encrypted, we can actually see the subject alternative name of the host, um, which is below the certificate. And then we can, we can categorize on that whether we want the connection to be inspected or not. So this is actually a helper. So you can use it with HTTPS inspection or without, which is pretty cool. A lot of people say like, you know, with AI and uh, deep learning, and XDR, you know, maybe it's not as good to do at the network level. Maybe you actually just mirror traffic and send it some other um, thing for decryption, uh, or maybe you mirror decrypt and then hand it off. But with XDR and knowing what your endpoints are doing, there's a lot more um, involvement there. And maybe, you know, maybe you don't have to do it. Um, the other thing is application security. So if you're running stuff, especially in the web, uh, on your web servers and API gateways, you can use AppSec to actually solve this problem. All right, so how does it work? Uh, basically, the security gateway is the intermediary, uh, intermediary, I can't speak, between the client and a secure website. As simple as that. So the client sends a hello. Um, we actually intercept it at the gateway. Uh, we send it to... Uh, get certificate, certificate comes back, we act as the intermediary again, and then we have our connection. Uh, policy matching, this is, I'm just going to put all these through. The first thing that we do is look at anti-spoofing, and then the next thing is HTTPS inspection. So the we decide if we're going to inspect right there based on rules and what to inspect. And then it goes to access control and then to all the blades. So the next thing would be is, okay, the inspect rule says yes, you inspect, then we inspect it uh, with the access control. So is there a rule that allows that traffic to go? And then all the threat prevention blades can come in after that. And if that uh, there's, a, there's a rule in the policy, then it'll go and then we'll inspect it with threat prevention. If there's no HTTPS inspection, then it's not inspected. And this is showing the order. This is actually super important. There's some really good stuff in Checkmates about order of operations for our engines, which is really powerful. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, so this is just showing an example in the rule base. And um, also just um, like regulatory stuff, remember health, financial services, government services are typically um, not inspected. So you would use a bypass uh, rule for that. Uh, let's see what else do I want to tell you. I think that's it. All right, so outbound, um, inbound, we have two different use cases, one for outbound and one for inbound. So we're going to go ahead and talk about outbound first. So how it works is uh, basically all HTTP, uh, connect, HTTPS connections that originate from the client and are connecting out to a server on the internet. We um, actually, uh, the gateway looks at the HTTPS request in the HTTPS inspection rule. If the request doesn't match, the packet is not decrypted. If the request matches an inspection rule, then the gateway makes sure that the certificate from the server um, on the internet is valid. The certificate, uh, the security gateway creates a new certificate, presents it to the client, and then the client creates an HTTPS connection to the gateway. Um, there are two HTTPS connections, one to internal client and one to the server. It can then decrypt and inspect the packets um, according to the security gateway and other rule bases. The packets are then encrypted again and sent to the destination. So this is just showing that in a pretty way. I'm using a, uh, I won't tell you about my fun ad adventures today with that or yesterday, starting yesterday. And uh, with uh, my content that I had created for you guys. So um, I think that's it. So here we go. We're now looking at the, uh, we're somebody that clients browsing to cloudstorage.com. Um, we get the certificate, uh, the gateway, we generate a certificate on the fly. 
and the connections allowed. So where do we configure this? Uh, in security management, uh, you generate a CA on the security gateway and you're prompted to define the fully qualified domain name um, for the CA. Make sure you put a password and protect the private key, please. And you need to import this uh, as the root certificate on computers that will generate HTTPS traffic that will get inspected. Um, this is just showing export the root certificate of the gateway CA. So you, you're going to export it, and then you need to put this out somewhere where the clients can get to it, right? So uh, normally you can do this via, you can manually do it, or you can use a GPO, like a root policy, to distribute a certificate to a large amount of users. All right, so then configuring the outbound HTTPS inspection, go and manage settings, you gotta turn it on. And I think these, some of my content, this is older content I had to grab, but I believe that most of the screen captures are the same. If something varies, don't freak out. Uh, like I said, I had kind of a, a, a corrupt hard drive issue and I'm dealing with that. So I'm using an older deck. Um, this is just showing how you actually go in and configure HTTPS inspection. This is starting on R80.40 uh, and up. Uh, so here's where you actually create your role base. Again, remember that you, in your area, you may have to bypass certain types of um, HTTPS traffic. So be aware of that. Uh, just creating the role base. Uh, the next is actually showing how you bypass. So we have uh, now updatable objects, as you guys know, starting with um, R80.40, we can do HTTPS inspection. Um, so starting 80.20, we could do updatable objects in the firewall rule base or access control rule base, but 80.40, we're able to do um, HTTPS I and uh, threat prevention rule basis. So dynamic objects, or I'm sorry, updatable objects are actually supported fully in those. Uh, so we'll also, there's a really great SK on how these get updated as well. Uh, this is basically just showing that you can, um, so that if you have a, a revoke certificate, so we, you, you have to have internet connection to uh, validate certificates. And this is just showing if the certificate is revoked or we actually can't communicate to CRL, then basically uh, the traffic will be dropped. Let's see what else we want to tell you. So all this stuff is going on in the background. You shouldn't notice any, um, you shouldn't notice any type of uh, performance issue. And then untrusted certificates and lack of CRLs will actually be a reason to drop the connection. But you'll see that uh, if you check the right box, you'll see that log connections um, will show up as the, that the clients have installed this the CA certificate. Um, let's see what else. You may want to look at your outbound network traffic for certificate untrusted messages. And that's what it looks like. And you can see here's a detail of the card shows that it's not um, it's not signed by a trusted CA. Uh, validation settings. So the default, the trusted, where you can see this is example of the validation for the trusted CA. And then these will be updated automatically after the first after the first build for config. They'll be updated automatically. And then you can see that if a, if a trusted CA is blacklisted, um, you'll get that information. So you want to actually have that checked off. Uh, let's see what else. Install your list, of, uh, install a new list of trusted CAs, and you'll see that they're pub you have to do, have a, do a publish and import your, uh, your gateway CA root certificate to your Windows computer. So that, again, this will actually be something that you would want to optimize through some other mechanism like GPO. Um, that's just showing install, install the certificate local um, certificate uh, from example from a window. So you want to put it somewhere where you can grab it. Uh, let's see what else we're going to show you. This is showing on Linux machines. 
Sorry, going quickly. 30 minutes is not very much. <laughs> yeah, and you can see, um, so if you actually, if you ever do click and you're doing HTTPS inspection, you'll actually see the certificate is, will show up as um, checkpoint. So we're like, yes, we're as the intermediary. Something about, let's see, um, when the other blades are active, what does it look like? So this, in this case, um, how, how will this look in the logs, right? So this person is trying to go to DuckDuckGo. You can see that um, the root CA of the gate or the root certificate for the gateway CA is imported to the client. Um, we have four different loggings to show this. So you see HTTPS inspection. Let's look at the details now. You have uh, URL filtering, HTTPS inspection. You have three logging and application control. So both the application control and URL filtering blades are active. Pretty, 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 very pretty. Um, so if you look at the first one, it shows web browsing activity. And then we see three messages about the CRL related to DuckDuckGo that could not be verified. So it failed to fetch. You can see right here. Uh, if I can get my mouse over here. It failed to uh, fetch CRL. Make sure that the security gateway is outgoing HTTPS access and proxy and DNS are configured. Obviously, you have to have connection to the internet. So you can see that this is a, a message. Then we see that the site has been categorized by the URL filtering blade. And this is showing access to Facebook controlled by the application control. You can see that it shows Facebook transmitting, uh, transmits uh, the application information, social networking, and then the time spent. So you actually see uh, the time spent using the app and the amount of data transferred. Um, those are all locked. All right, really quick on inbound uh, HTTPS uh, inspection. So it's, this is the traffic is um, originating, it's inbound, it's ingress, it's the clients on the internet out or external somewhere and the servers internal. So the gateway um, uses, doesn't create a new certificate, it actually uses the server's original certificate and a private key. So how it works is, uh, the, the traffic flow is basically, we intercept the request. Um, we use the server's original certificate and private key to initiate the TLS uh, connection with the client. It creates, uh, the gateway creates a, and establishes a new TLS connection with the web server. And then using the two TLS connections, we decrypt the encrypted data from the client. We inspect the clear text content for the, all the blades. And then we encrypt the traffic, um, and then we hand it off uh, to the, the destination uh, server behind the security gateway. Same thing, very quickly. How do you configure? Pretty straightforward. Um, you have to import the server certificate. Uh, so you have to be aware of that. Let's see. We also need to make sure that we are using the entire certificate chain for configuring in, in, in incoming traffic. Uh, we need a P12 file. Let's see what else do I wanna tell you? So there's some, there are some very specific things on this. I'm gonna refer you to the best practice, but for the best security, you should make the, uh, the security gateways internal CA, a subordinate CA of the existing CA of the organization. Um, you should deploy the certificate on the entire org, and you should export a CA certificate from an existing CA of the organization. Uh, you have to create an outbound rule for bypass traffic in just a similar way. You create an inbound rule to inspect traffic using the server certificate you have imported. This is a log example of inbound HTTPS inspection. It's showing inbound inspect. Um, and again, whatever blades that you have turned on, 
if there's a rule for us to inspect it uh, for HTTPS inspect, we inspect and then we actually uh, apply access control and also all of the blades. All right, some constraints and best practices. How much time do I have? A few minutes. Uh, so seriously, we kind of talked about this along the way, but um, you should actually think about specifically what you're doing. I mean, we we have people that literally have asked, hey, we want to turn this on on everything. And you're like, okay, let's talk about this, right? We also, we also recommend like you understand the, the use case specific and then what things do you want to inspect and really start with a very small use case um, and a limited scope so you can control it. There's also all of these great, you know, I think we share this presentation out, don't we? The, there's lots of great um, SKs here for you as well. So uh, we'll share that as well. Yeah, that'll be in the follow-up email, yep. Okay, cool. Um, so best practices certificates for inbound again, uh, so, uh, some browsers do full chain validation, include all of the intermediate CAs in the chain of the P12. Uh, outbound gateway should sign certificates as the CA, and when importing an external certificate in smart dashboard, use the CA certificate. Make sure that you set all your sign for uh, SHA-256 or higher so that you don't get warnings for that browser. Um, just know that there's some constraints. So quick traffic, HTTP3 is not supported yet. Um, let's see what else. Uh, I think that's a typo in a replace. Uh, recommend, so building um, bypass rules, always again, refer to your regulatory uh, requirements, uh, what, you, what you can inspect. And then also just because you can inspect doesn't mean that you should. Um, sometimes you should be aware that some mobile apps uh, may not be forced to trust the gateway CA. And then there's a lot of applications that uh, use certificate pinning and chain pinning. So that might be a challenge. You have to think about that. Sometimes mobile apps. And then um, uh, think about multi-category certificates and SNI, which you can use, which is very cool. And you can also use that for bypass and inspect decisions. And update services like the up, the updatable objects can be implicitly bypassed by the uh, inspection rule. Uh, always the gateway have to be connected either to the internet uh, internet directly or through a proxy, because if without internet we can't do a CRL fetch, right? And we can also um, do categorization uh, based on URL if we don't have access to the internet. Uh, Inspecting on a bridge, make sure you have connect to the internet for CRL. Uh, let's see what else. Okay, so Dropbox, I think these still true OneDrive and log me in. Go to meeting. These, um, if you turn on HTTPS inspection, they won't work. So they use certificate pinning. And uh, this is the SK that you would want to go, for, go to check out what would how you should approach that. And this uh, SK is constantly updated. Uh, in terms of performance, there are, from a gateway perspective, it should be limited now, very limited uh, performance impact, but you can actually uh, run, you can run a tool to actually, like a gateway sizing, a client sizing, and we can see what the impact would be if we turn on HTTPS inspection. Again, if you're doing limited scope, it will be it will be the way to approach things pretty quickly and and not uh, worry about it. And maybe pick certain parts of that. Uh, maybe certain areas or certain things that you want to inspect on, on just one one single gateway or a cluster before you go um, further. Let's see what else can I tell you. So we might need to do a part two, but basically this is a server name identification. I think this came. Uh, already at 48 up, but this is an uh, extension of TLS. So we actually can see that um, the, we can see the host name and the actual extension of the, um, the server name identification or indication rather in the actual, this is a, it looks like a wire chart. You can actually see what the server is. And this is great when we have um, multiple uh, 
SSL or TLS certificates on the same IP. So under this would be, if you look at uh, subject alternative name, you can see the extension of certificates. You can see the subject alt field. I mean, this is an example. YouTube is really is Google now. Um, and you can see all of the, the multiple domains with this single certificate. Uh, so you can actually use this for bypass. And especially like if you have a certificate pinning. Let's see, this is just showing you how SNI actually solves the challenge of having multiple, um, multiple, uh, uh, multiple URLs going to the same IP. Let's see what else we want to show you. There's some other stuff. Sorry about the animation. I'm going quickly. So ciphers and curves, um, we have we support everything for TLS 1.2, and then um, TLS 1.3. There's an SK specific on that, and uh, it uses um, user space firewall mode. And you need to indicate. You need to be sure that you know that your gateway will support that. Let's see what else? I don't think I want to tell you about this. I think mirror and uh, mirror and decrypt is super cool. If you guys, I know some really big financials that basically we do mirror, we pull in all the traffic and then just hand it off to a physical interface, and then it goes into uh, a ginormous data lake that they're doing, and they do their own uh, kind of version of they do their own like uh, algorithms and so forth for their SOC and for other things. Um, so we can do that. We can literally just mirror all the traffic and send it somewhere else to decrypt, or we can mirror and decrypt um, and still send all that decrypted traffic out to a specific interface. Just be aware where you're uh, decrypting and handing off that traffic, you should decrypt once and hand it off. And it should be that whatever is, whenever that traffic traverses there, know that that, you know, you can't have any exposure where that unencrypted traffic is. So it has to be into like an, uh, an enclave of some kind where um, there is limited access and it's it's very specific. Uh, let's see what else. So again, this HTTPS uh, light, we call it, you don't have to turn on HTTPS inspection. Uh, we can actually look at the CN, um, the SNI, and then we can use that in the policy and you don't have to turn on inspection. However, if you want to inspect, uh, you can use those as actually use those in your role base. Mm, what else? Uh, this is just showing updatable objects. Let's see if there's anything else. We're out of time. It's okay. We're recording. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't think this stuff, I mean, I can send to you guys this, oh, just some troubleshooting for um, looking at CPU for HTTP2 uh, is basically just showing you the connections. Um, see those. So TLS 1.3, there hasn't been a huge uptake in adoption. It should be because it's so much better than 1.2. But um, we do support 1.3, as we talked about. Uh, remember that all the handshake messages after server hello are encrypted. It's actually really way, way better on a performance perspective and way more secure. And besides that, uh, we're working on some other uh, some other inspection of other protocols over TLS, so on maps and and so forth, um, SSH we already have, and I think that is it in terms of running through this deck. And sorry, again, a lot of this is that uh, some of this was superfluous. Uh, I can't say it, the word, but you know what I'm saying is uh, some of this is redundant. Um, and this is a presentation that I uh, that I had to use really rapidly because of my uh, 
disconnect. I don't know, understand. It. Yeah, Mickey had a rough morning there, but uh, we appreciate yes. the information. Yeah, and, and I know that's it's a lot of information in a very short time frame. Like she said, we can do a part two. I know this was a, re a requested topic. So please reach out to me. Let me know if you want deeper dive, if that was adequate. Um, just let me know. We're always looking for new topics here, but um, we did get a couple questions here, Mickey. Um, okay. How do we know if Checkpoint is operating or making decisions off of the certificate common name, subject, alternative name, or SNI? Can you tell if it's which it's doing the decision on? Uh, yeah, you should see that in the log. So without, without, are you saying with HTTPS inspection on? Uh, I assume yes. Michael? Michael, jump in if you... Yes, with the inspection, yes. So with inspection, then going back to that, uh, and I can't fire up anything right now because I'm working off another uh, home laptop, but um, basically it's going to go the order of operations. So if you're HTTP, HTTPS inspection and you're not bypassing uh, by, by CN or SNI, then um, first of all, the first thing is, okay, yeah, we're inspecting it. Uh, is there access? So that's the HTTPS inspection rule. Um, it's not being bypassed. Well, I guess you were saying it could be making decisions. So is it bypassed or is it inspected? So if that's the answer is yes, then the next thing is access control. And if there's a rule for that traffic to go, then the next thing would be is any of your threat prevention blades. So you should see that across, you should see that in your logging. Okay. But, but remember, this is the thing. This is where we really, and I'm having a, a, a workshop with a customer later on today on order of ops for threat prevention, because uh, the way that these blades work, and the, there's a, it's the, the gentleman that does all the cool drawings for uh, our for our engines that are on Checkmate. But literally, you have to think about the order of operations and what's happening. You should see those things though in your in your logging. Okay. Well, speaking of logging, I'll jump down to another one. Uh, I guess you saw this on your screen. Connection duration and connection bytes transferred information and logging. What feature enables that? I don't see that in my general logs. So you're doing HTTPS inspection. Are you the I guess the question would be is if it's if it's being unencrypted for that, you may only see the information about the, the actual um, connections. I don't know if you're gonna see, see, I don't see that on my general logs. I don't know, we'll have to, maybe yeah, we, we should take, take the, that yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get back to you there, Michael. We'll, to, we'll uh, I'll drop that one down. Yeah, actually let us, I mean, we're probably gonna have to show us what, what you, why you think you're not seeing. Okay. Uh, you mentioned quick is in development. Is there an ETA? I do not have that answer to that. Yep. Oh, I will find out. Then. I, I, I bet that's what you were going to say. Uh, let's see. Yes, the legacy dashboard will go away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can, can we get these slides? Yes. And like I said, this is recorded also. Um, Oh, I think I skipped one by mistake. Hold on. Oh, best okay. practice for distributing new gateway root certificate when the current one expires. Mm. Uh, I generate this... a new gateway root certificate, but it will take time for the admins to install the new cert. So in the meantime, users will see an HTTPS error message because of an expired cert. I mean, I would say this goes along with how you're managing certificates. Are you talking about the, the, um, the certificate authority? Or are we talking about our, our CA, the gateway being the CA? So is it outbound or? Yeah, it doesn't. Maybe that, that's another one. Maybe we have to have a deeper conversation. Yeah. Okay, I'll jot that down. And I know we're going over people, but this is recorded, like I said. So if you have to drop, I understand. But I want to get through these questions we have. Mickey, you don't have a conflict, do you? Uh, no, I'm good for a few. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Like I said, I get the slides. Is it recommended to have a default rule to bypass traffic that we would not like to inspect or just have rules for inspection and specific bypass? 
I think that you would want to, I mean, I think you would want to specify what you want to inspect and, and especially at the beginning. So what are you wanting to inspect? And then, uh, and then you could basically, you, I guess it depends, it depends on like really how, how much you're going to inspect. If it's, uh, if you're going to be like surgical, then you would want to have everything that you would want to bypass and then inspect the rest. Or if you're not bypassing much, you want to inspect, I mean, whatever the mass, the most, sorry, uh, whatever the most uh, traffic that you're inspecting, I think you would want to do the inverse of whatever is the least amount of configuration in your role base. So if you're inspecting a lot, then I guess what you want to bypass. If you're uh, inspecting a little, then inspect that and bypass everything else. Yep. Uh, we have general recommendation for VSX resource allocation for virtual gateway running HTTPS inspection. I mean, it's the same mm -hmm. as hardware gateway, right? I mean, you just have to do the matters of what blade you're running. And yeah, I think so. I mean, it's, I think I don't know of any constraints, but I think I would definitely, one, because they're, it's virtual systems, I think I would be more careful about how I would approach that. And I would definitely want to look at the performance impact. Again, uh, there are so many ways that you can do uh, threat prevention without having full HTTPS inspection. And so like you really have to think about, or do you have alter alternative ways to achieve what you're trying to do? And what does the HTTPS inspection glean you? What are, what, again, back to you, um, what you said, Robert, is what other blades are, that are those uh, VSs running? Right. Um, I would still treat it like a, like a, you know, a physical server and run some, performance calculations and then take into consideration that that those are virtual systems right yeah every every one is unique so you have to look at your yeah. system yeah yeah uh one vote for a part two on this mickey so you're on the hook for part two yeah yeah and maybe i'll have my my good content oh uh, yeah. don't curse yourself here <laughs> i know right uh, is it possible to configure the inbound inspection without having to configure outbound inspection yes you can do those independently I got some tips on what they want to hear next time. I'll just cut and paste those out. Uh, so when HTTPS inspection is enabled, does the traffic hit the HTTPS inspection before the access policy? Yes. Yes. Yeah, the first thing would be is, is it, you know, it's anti-spoofing. It's on the interface, right? And then if that if there is setting for anti-spoofing, the next thing would be HTTPS inspection rule to either inspect or not to inspect. And then the next handoff would be to the access control, which is your firewall rule base, right? And then after that, it's the blades. So I mean, honestly, we we're looking at like why even carry that forward if you're if you're if you're not going to inspect or you're going to inspect, what are you doing? And then the next order of operations is access control. If that, uh, based on our access control rule base, is that traffic allowed or not? Then you decide. Well, if you don't need it anymore, you're going to drop it, right? So if there's not a, a rule for it, and then if it does go forward from access control list, then all your blades are turned on. But it really does matter, like your blades, because HTTPS I um, that inspection, it looks, you see different things based on what blades are turned on. And you really have to think about the order of operation. And I do, I did see somebody turn on or talk about advanced, uh, the detailed and accounting and logging. So I think you need the detailed. And this is also super important to know what release, what version you're running uh, in terms of, maybe I can show you. In, in the part two, what, what it looks like for uh, different, we'll, we'll do some wire sharks and some logging based on different versions of uh, security management and gateway. Okay. Um, yeah, I was just gonna mention that one too, that somebody posted on the logging that they might have to put on detailed logging and possibly accounting. But like I said, we'll get back to you on that one, Michael. Um, 
Can we get QoS usage reports in the management server reports? I don't, mm. don't quite follow that one. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'll pop that one out too. You're talking about it for, I wonder, yeah, so I wonder, yeah, I wonder what that means. Anybody yeah. wants to add more? Yeah, context. yeah, and yeah, and I'm anyone asking these questions, I am pulling those out and I'll get back to you all individually. Um, is there an SK on configuring the checkpoint CA as an intermediate subordinate CA to Microsoft AD root CA? Uh, I do believe it's in the best practice for the CA for the gateway. I think it's uh, it's in that those SKs that I have listed, okay. and there is a bunch. Do you want me to put those in the uh, chat? But I'll, I'll have those in the follow-up email. You know, I'll pull them out of your prezo and everyone will get those. That's okay, fine. Cool. Um, let's see. If we expect all and then bypass with the new updatable objects, if we put that rule up top, would we be able to identify to remove the ones that are no longer needed? I, sorry, I'm a little confused there too. Can you read that one, Mickey? In there? If we inspect all of them, bypass. We bypass by updatable objects. You put, you put the rule up top, we will be able to identify and remove the ones no longer needed. Uh, well, I guess it depends on what release, but if you're using, I mean, the idea of updatable objects is that you, um, those are constantly, like those are a separate kind of, you know, thing that they're always being updated because Microsoft and all these guys change these things literally, you know. Uh, oh, I think what you're saying is if you go to updatable objects, can you remove the ones that you you hand you built by hand? Uh, if that's what you're talking about, yeah. You, I, I think if you can use updatable objects today. So what was that it was released? Uh, what is it, HTTPS and threat prevention, was it 80.40? So once that came about, I mean, the idea is that like, I know people that were hand building, you know, what used to be, you know, updatable objects, you should be able to use updatable objects. If you if you upgraded all along it, it, it did a migration on your management, you probably would have gotten, you probably would have converted those to updatable objects uh, when you did that, but I don't know if you didn't have help or if no one, you know, gave you that recommendation. But I think uh, I think it's a lot easier to use them. The only one that I there's a couple of things for like Azure, like uh, Power BI, and a couple others that um, they because they have like more context below that application. Those aren't updatable objects, but pretty much. Uh, it's pretty robust with the updatable objects, so you shouldn't have to be hand building. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of, you know, I'm sure people pop up more questions. Talk to your SE directly, and we can obviously get this info for you. Um, I think we just got one more, Mickey. Okay. Uh, is there any dev work to split inbound and outbound protocol controls? For example, allow minimum version outbound to TLS version one and inbound TLS version 1.2. Mm, I wouldn't be using TLS one one dot is zero. <laughs> zero. Um, I do not know if I don't know if that's possible. I will find out though. So you want to have you want to have different you want to support different versions of TLS. Different, yeah, different minimum versions based on the use case. Yeah. Undid. Yep, I cut that one out too. So okay. Yeah, that's a good question. I do not. Uh, yeah, we got some good ones here. Yeah, I think that's a good All question. All right, I think we got through everything. I apologize if I missed something. Please reach out to me or your SE, like I said, and we'll make sure we get to those. And again, I know Mickey had a problem with her prezo today, and we went quick. So um, we had two votes in the chat for part two, Mickey. So now you're really okay. on the vote. Um, yeah, and if it's the same folks, hopefully that would attend, which I think theoretically we could say that would be. Uh, then I can have some different, I can do some really good wire shark stuff for you guys as well and show you what some of these things will look like in the logs. And then we can do, we can focus more on order of ops. Like you can see like the logging with, with all the blades turned on and 
an HPS inspection, what you're seeing all the way through, we'll get some more detailed logs. Yep. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, and we, yeah, we don't have to revisit this because it's recorded so anybody can go back and watch this one before the next one. So we're good yes. there. So thank you, Mickey. Great information. I apologize to everybody for going over, but I didn't want to ignore any questions. Um, like I said, I'll send that follow-up email with all the reference content, those SK article links, and the recording link. Our next webinar will be in two weeks. That one will be on Horizon XDR XPR. So you'll see the invitation for that soon. But thanks again for joining. We'll see you here next time. Thank you, Mickey and everyone. Enjoy your day. Bye Thank all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.